I'm Bill Barlow, and uh, you might think you're out in the middle of a uh, Cook County Forest Preserve, but we're right in center field of Saks Park. Uh, this is the area patrolled by Jim Landis, by Ken Berry, uh, all the other great center fielders, Joe Jackson. This is probably a tribute to the Broussard family, all the nutrients they've put in this soil for the past uh, several decades of made this pretty fertile ground. This prairie sprung up overnight. Uh, there's so many memories here of players and, and uh, different hits I can remember. Uh, over there by where it says King, Kingsford Picnic Area, that's the famous area where Al Smith uh, in the 1959 World Series had a beer knocked right in his face. He was leaping up to make the catch. Uh, Bill Veck put these uh, picnic uh, seats in in 1960 when he painted the ballpark white. Uh, I remember being here for the 1959 World Series against the Dodgers. I came here for the sixth game, which was a decisive game, and sat right up there in the right center field seats with my mother and father, October 6th, 1959. And, uh, we started out with an early lead, but I think the Sox lost about nine to three. I remember Duke Snyder hitting a home run in the upper deck, right up, right up here. A looping, it never seemed to come down. It landed on the top row. Uh, I remember one ball, the one day when Harry Carey almost caught a, a line drive off of Dick Allen's bat. It was a line drive, it hit right up there in center field where Bill Veck put the shower. It bounced off, Harry Carey was doing a remote broadcast and the ball bounced right off the seats in center field. Uh, just so many memories of the scoreboard going off and the spaciousness of this outfield. Uh, it certainly was a pitcher's ballpark. But this is a park my dad brought me to. My first memory going to a, to a day game, sitting in a box seat and seeing the beautiful field. And it's a shame. I think this could have lasted another 50, 75 years, but what are you gonna do? Everyone needs, uh, every generation, I suppose, needs their own building, their own new construction, but uh, this, is a, this is a shrine. We can compare players from one generation to the other. Babe Ruth played here. Hell, the first World Series played here was in 19, uh, I think, 16 or 15, the Chicago Cubs played here. They uh, didn't have a park of their own that could hold a big enough crowd. So they borrowed this stadium and lost to the Yankees in it. But uh, this is unbelievable. We certainly have some hybrid plants growing here. Play in center field here in beautiful Comiskey Park, spacious Comiskey Park. That's hit the center. He's going back. He's going back, back, back. Boy, they say Wrigley Field has vines. Good old Comiskey, you can't beat the vines here. That's what remains in the dugout. I can remember coming here with my cousin. My aunt was a police officer, and uh, she'd get us in here for, for zip. When we come to Yankee Sax doubleheaders, and uh, I remember the Sax always ahead in the main thing until the Yankees came up. And the the Sax were ahead by a runner, two, the Yankees had scored three. And the Sax had strand the bases loaded. That happened every year until 1959 when they finally beat the Yankees. You should have heard this park rocking and rolling. That was the year of the go-go Sox. This whole place would be just shaking. Every time a runner got on first, they'd be going, go, go, go. Invariably, they'd steal. They ran, had timely hitting and very little power, and good pitching, good defense and they won, the, they won the pennant. But uh, I can remember Louis Aprichot, Nellie Fox, Al Smith, 
big Flusinski. The great players have played here. Everybody played here. 1935 World Series. But the lever, the lever had that close in feeling you have right here. Like we're sitting right here, you kind of you feel close to the action. Even those weeds look really close. This was definitely built for a fast, speedy outfield. When you walk out there, you realize how much ground they had to cover. Pitchers loved it because, uh, you know, any kind of a fly ball could be caught. Very little wind factor here. Well, this is the end of the line for this lady, but just to give some of my memories, I saw Ted Williams hit a home run in the upper deck right out there in, in right, straightaway right field. He'd come up there at the plate and he'd shake his ass, his booty. He's a left-hander. He'd be shaking there and then, boom! Huge, loafing. He really hit some shots. I remember seeing Duke Snyder hit a home run into the, uh, Center field upper deck, the sixth game of the World Series in 1959. Uh, I saw Sherman Lawler, who was the White Sox catcher in 1959, get thrown out. He hit a base hit to right field. The right fielder caught it on one hop and threw him out at first base. He, would, he, had, a, he had a lot of speed. Uh, like I said, Dick Allen hit a home run to the bleachers in center field on a line. Uh, it was just no more fun than coming out here in the 50s when I was a kid and watching Louis Aparicio and Nellie Fox uh, steal bases, hit and run. Excellent the, uh, baseball for speed, good defense. Uh, so many memories coming out here with my buddies, uh, 1967 when the White Sox were one game out in September. But somehow, I don't know what happened, but the same feeling wasn't there as 1959. The people weren't coming out here as much. But uh, Boston won it, I think, the last week of the, of the season by one game. Uh, there will never be another ballpark like this. The feeling you had here, you're close into the field. Just is a wonderful place to watch baseball. And we can compare generations in this ballpark. We can say, I have a guy on this team hit one this far. Well, 10 years ago, a guy hit one that far. Babe Ruth hit one here. Greg Luzinski hit one here. Ryan Kittle hit one there. But the new ballpark is cut off from all that. We'll never compare old, the old, old time greats. Joe DiMaggio played here during his 56 game hitting streak in 1941. Uh, Cubs played on this field right here in 1915. They had to borrow this field because they, they didn't have their own ballpark. I think Babe Ruth played uh, for the Boston Braves in that series. Uh, just unbelievable. Bill Feck, he made this park come alive. He thought of more promotions, which maybe some people don't like, but he made it a family place to go and enjoy the game. He put the, the picnic grove area in, center field scoreboard. He knew what, what promote, promoting was. He'd have uh, any kind of a promotion you could name. Uh, bring your dog to the ballpark, get in free. Uh, he, he knew what, what it was to, to get the park, get the people into the park. And you'd have a good time. And he brought the first winning team here. He would have loved this ballpark. He, he's probably crying in his grave right now. He, he'd, he'd understand the beauty of this park. And he'd find the money to remodel it. 
sure you have a lot of maintenance costs, but you have a treasure. You don't see them tearing down Fenway Park or Wrigley Field. But this is a this was my field of dreams. This is from my earliest memory. This was it. This was prime time. This is where you wanted to be. This is what you wanted to be. You wanted to be a ball player. And right now we're standing on Halo Drown. I'd always be up there looking down at the players in their perfectly white uniforms, throwing a perfectly white ball. And you just wanted to be there. This is hallowed ground. We'd always be on that side of the wall. And now here we are on the field. And now it's turning back to its original state. Comiskey Park, circa 1907. I remember coming here for my first night game. You uh, fought your walked with the crowd, you got in here, and when you came up the ramp, we had a seat in the upper deck there. Came in with my father. And we sat in a grandstand reserve back seat. And as soon as you come through the aisle, you come into a big splash of white lights, perfectly white lights, and you see the smoke kind of crescending up, and the first field perfectly green, and then the white contrasting. Unbelievable. Just uh, to hear the intensity of the crowd, in this park here, you're close into the field. You're not like a lot of the ballparks, including that across the street. The crowd's kind of swept back from the field. You're, you're, you're not close to the action. Here, hell, you're right here, a guy could lean over that railing, and you, I, I'd hear him. I'd see every line in his face. If some guy's taunting me, he's right in my ear. You're right on top of the action. If you wanted to get your, your money's worth from your ticket, you could sure do that. You could give them all you wanted to give them.